What amazing light. Good morning. reflection there in the water of that light. Welcome everybody to our sunrise stroll and chat. We've got a feast of readings. We've got a good friend of mine here today. We share a lot in common. And a lot difference even a lot of difference even though and because <laughs> uh, we're almost three thousand years apart. And that's my buddy Amos from Tekoa. Tekoa is a little village not too far from Bethlehem. And it's in the Judean desert. And I'll never forget a hike. It's my last big hike. <laughs> About, I think it was like 37 kilometers. Uh, about, I don't know how many, seven or eight years ago probably 2015 or to January 2016, around that time, uh, across from Tekoa to Ein Gedi on the Dead Sea. So we crossed the entire Judean desert there at that point from sunrise. I remember the sun was rising in the morning. It was January, so the days were shorter, from sunrise to moonrise over the Dead Sea. It was just an incredible occasion and memorable for many different reasons but Amos always appealed to me since he was a farmer taking care of trees and flocks I didn't do too much with trees we chopped up some ash trees for the fire at home that was our energy source we didn't have electricity so we had a fireplace we chopped up the wood Usually of fallen trees or yeah, old trees or also clearing overgrown hedges and the wood of the white thorn was particularly uh, burned very hot uh, it was wonderful in the winter time and our job was to fix the we called it the range and it was that's that stove type thing where you take off a circular lid and you fit in the pieces of wood that you cut down to size that so they could fit in and the first task was to light the fire from scratch but normally you try to keep it going from the night before so amos is uh, in big trouble because the head of the temple wants to chase him out of town he says you've no right to be you're not a prophet you don't prophesy here. And he said, I'm not a prophet. I'm a farmer. Farming boy. But God told me to go. God told me to speak. And there's wonderful commentary afterwards about that principle. About the lion's roar. Who can suppress it, you know? Who can suppress somebody who's sent by God to speak? power of the sacred scriptures which are so marvelous today we have a wonderful shake a wonderful hand we're dealt a wonderful hand like you're playing cards you know so hope i don't offend anybody by that image and so we've got a, a, a great a, a slew of readings today and the first one there with amos uh, it's just the authenticity of his of his word he's the first prophecy uh, first book that's of prophet that is, is written. So then the, the greatest prophet Elijah and his successor Elisha, 
they didn't write books of prophecy or their disciples didn't turn their preaching into books. But Amos is the first one, so he's uh, early in the 8th century, I think. 9th century, 8th century before Christ. The time of King Jeroboam. Lots of corruption of the faith life of the people. And Amos is calling them out over this. And so he is a persona non grata. Many prophets are. Most prophets ended up martyred in the, in the Hebrew scriptures as well. And then we have Jesus sending out the 12 apostles two by two today. And they're going to have the same ending. They're going to also be martyred. And they give witness. That's the purpose, to give witness to God's will, his word, his intent for the good of humanity because God loves us. And that's an extraordinary thing. There's a whole lot of little insects here. I don't know if I'd catch them in camera. They're about an inch long and they're just like a hair thick and they have a little head on them and they have a white... Uh, I saw five or six of them right now and they're, uh, they're not your regular... There's one right down there under the camera right now, but I don't know if the background is so white you can hardly see them going around. At least I think they're insects or maybe it's just pieces of grass. It's kind of strange. Maybe there's a wind driving it here. But it's so similar. I don't know. So Amos is... is... Uh, it's just marvelously clear and authentic and... He has just everything to lose from a physical point of view, but he is fulfilling an amazing mission. It's very, very strong words, strong uh, statements about God's will for, especially for justice, social justice, you know? So yesterday there was a little follow-up question about a suggestion I made regarding the notes that are attached to the biblical source uh, for these, the translation that we're using here with the link that I provide. It's both here on Facebook and on YouTube. And on the commentary, I, I add these notes. And there's a link to the readings. Now, it's very, very simple to go to the notes from that link. So you're inside, when you open it up, you're inside the link and you, what you do is you just hit with your little finger, with your finger, you just hit the quotation, like the particular Amos AM and the numbers over on the right upper corner before each reading. And you just hit that and that takes you into the exact spot that you're reading from in the book. It's so simple, just hit that number. And it takes you right to the text and then at the bottom, you'll have reference from little note numbers or letters at the verses that you're reading. And you just have to scroll down to them at the bottom of the page and you can read those notes. And then all you have to do to get back to your original site uh, where the, all the readings are together, all you have to do is touch the an arrow that just reverses to where you were because there's only one motion you did. You touched the number and you're in and then you have to touch the arrow that just says, go back. So it's that simple. I hope that's clear. And let's move on. We have some wonderful things today uh, to comment. I guess we'll only do a little bit of it here and do more at the Mass at 8.15. Right now it's about 6 o'clock, I think, in the morning. 6.10, actually. I'm going to sit down here for a minute. Just because the readings are so stunning today, I want to... Oh, that's a nice spot there with the sun. So I want to um, just ponder them a little bit more with you. And I will also continue doing that during the Mass. I hope they'll come up from here on this phone. Uh, I'll be with you in a second on this, hopefully.
so many pages opened here. Okay, I'm going to find it very soon. I'll be with you. I'm almost there. I'm scrolling through. Now I'm in July 14th. I want to go down to the second reading and also the apostles, but the second reading for me from Ephesians is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely crazy. If you go into the second reading, um, I think you need to sit down with this reading. And you, every single word is loaded with meaning. And it's uh, actually this, most of this was in a prayer that our community had as a, a morning prayer for decades. I was praying most of this text every morning, in my prayer to Jesus. And it's uh, just absolutely so crazy. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the, he in the heavens. As he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, he chose us in him. Before the foundation of the world, and he chose us to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ. In accord with the favor of his will. For the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in, his, in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor. This word favor uh, in his love for us, by his grace, his goodness to us. Uh, this is it's just this first generation of Christians, second generation of Christians are so stunned by the extent of God's love. It was already there in, in texts considering redemption, of considering creation. In, in the Song of Songs, and in Hosea, in, in really everything, you know. And, but then, in the experience of redemption, he, did, he never did anything like this to another people to take them out from slavery in Egypt to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, um, to give them a mission light to the nations. They felt so blessed and truly. And we are grafted in heirs of this blessing. But then with the, with the explosion of revelation, the absolute blossoming of revelation in the person of Jesus, in the goodness, the forgiveness, the power over evil, um, the expulsion of of satan of demons which is also mentioned in the gospel today and that's like clearing the field so all the growth can come the kingdom of god is here that's what jesus announced at the sea of galilee sins are forgiven forgiveness of sins every sin can be forgiven and some people feel in a terrible position they feel like they have a huge boulder on top of them and there's nobody around to lift it off and that's not true there's just so much in, in him we were chosen destined with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the things of the, so that we might exist for the praise of the glory of God that's why we exist we exist for the praise of the glory of God and he accomplishes everything and everyone all the good we do and that means then it's like, you know, a little child is riding the bicycle, but daddy is there behind. The, the helpful effort parents give children when they're doing their homework, they don't replace the children's effort because they don't want the kids just to copy paste. They want the kids to flourish into their own fullness of being. But the parents are so nurturing, so supportive, so there, so present and help you steering the kids from all kinds of different challenges in the culture, in a world that's very broken and, and messed up, and how it breaks parents' hearts when their kids go down a wrong road, and what they're willing to do to take them out. All of this is a shadow of the incredible love with which God nourishes us, nurtures us, 
and guides us in all of these things. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. I don't know, I'm stunned by this. And you know, as I said, I pray this text, most, a lot of this text um, for decades, and I'm still stunned today. It doesn't get old. It's like looking into a fire. There's something about a fire. You can look at it forever, a river flowing, a waterfall. How long can you watch a waterfall? It's amazing the, 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 the mystery that's in these realities that draws us in. The stars, to watch a starry sky, to become familiar with the stars. Uh, there's a, and you know, obviously then there are people that are like say, that's boring. Yeah, but you just have to develop the, the, a little bit of understanding, you have to develop a little bit of appreciation for what's involved. And we need to do that with the love of Christ. The love of Christ is an amazing mystery. And the love of God, an extraordinary mystery. The, just even nature itself. And we could live, uh, like not being able to taste, uh, I'm not, I don't know much about this, there are some other people that know a lot about wines and, and different foods, they're connoisseurs of, of connoisseurs of, of uh, you know, of many things, of classical music, of, of uh, art, of so many different realities that are, are absolutely marvelous. And obviously one can't do everything, but there are some things we shouldn't miss. There are some things we shouldn't miss. Also, the, the reality of family life, family life goes through major trials, right? But the family, family life is also a great mystery. And with a little bit of generosity and mercy and the largesse of heart, uh, you know, uh, stretch your heart and the, the wonder that's happening in each member of your family. That's actually more than in a sunrise. And it's more than in, in major economic development or scientific discovery, which can be also stunning. There's a lot more in there, so I'll, 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 I'll let you go for it yourself. And then I just like to one word in the gospel. Probably one of the things that has stunned most of the commentaries I've heard for this weekend is how the apostles are sent out with nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just the minimum shirt on their back, sandals, a staff like a stick to walk. You're going, you know, it's going through rough country and everything. A stick is always good. I like having my stick, you know, on the mountain. So, and they don't bring bread, they don't bring money. They're completely trusting God's province. They have to learn that. They're going out two by two, they have to support each other. They're going out with the message that God's kingdom is everything. It's an amazing thing. And they go out from here, from Galilee, right here at the Sea of Galilee. One sunrise morning and off they go. There, was a, there were a couple of interesting things I picked up there in one of the commentaries there. This uh, gospel exegesis is very nice. Uh, and one of the things was, he says he began to send them out in, in Mark's gospel and the commentary was, he began to send them out. Well, maybe they didn't all go out in one batch, you know? So then he maybe gave more personal attention to each pair, helping them to be ready and adjusted mentally for the challenges that faced, depending on the towns they were going to and so forth. And then another commentary that was also interesting was, obviously the apostles get at attention in the, these accounts because of the foundation of the church, but maybe there were also some others who went with them. Um, it's not to be excluded. I hadn't ever imagined that before. But why not? It could happen. Like they were the heading that team. But as soon as they went out two by two, and then they came back and they told Jesus. So somehow it makes sense to me that it's just two by two, but maybe there were some others with them as well as they went out in little groups. Eventually there'd be 72 and eventually the whole world. And Jesus said to all his big disciples, all his disciples, you know, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You're all sent out. So people, that's a lot for this morning. It's really, God's word is inexhaustible. It's, uh, 
it's so precious and some people are short on meaning they need to stuff themselves with creatures or with sweet things or with alcohol or with more troublesome realities and you know, just with buying stuff to fill a hole in their heart and there's so much in this uh, in these uh, sources for our life such richness such wealth of joy of meaning of purpose people see you later alligators great to have you here do our little selfie here to say goodbye god bless you have a blessed sunday it's great to be with you let's pray for the world that many people will discover the richness of this incredible legacy we have for thousands of years.